Hello, hello. So today I'm gonna to tell you how I photograph rings without a macro lens and what I use instead. So I actually use something that's called extension tubes and they cost me, when I bought them, they were about 25 bucks compared to a macro lens, which can be about $900, okay? So an extension tube looks like this. There's three of them in the set that I have, okay? And basically what they are, it's gonna create a space between your camera body and your lens, okay? So there are no optics, no glass. It's basically just a spacer. It does have electrical contacts, which is key because that means they can autofocus, okay? That was a big one for me. These are the, I guess it's called newer, newer brand on Amazon. Like I said, they were about $25 when I bought them. Right now they're about $32, which of course that's gonna fluctuate. So for the specific ones I have, they come in three sizes, 31 millimeter, 21 millimeter, and 13 millimeter. Okay, so this is basically how you control how close you can photograph your subject. And it's gonna turn your regular lens into a macro lens. Okay, so for me, it didn't really make sense for me to invest $900 into the Canon macro lens when I would only be using that for 30 minutes on a wedding day. I would basically only be using it for ring shots and really close up details of maybe the dress or the shoes or invitation, something like that. So this is a really great budget option, especially for photographers that are just starting out and you cannot afford a macro lens, you just don't wanna buy one like me. Let's talk about the pros and cons of using an extension tube versus a macro lens. So of course the first one is affordability. For $30 compared to a $900 Canon macro lens, you can't really beat that. Not only that, they are super small, compact, easy. They can fit straight into my pocket. They take up zero space in my camera bag compared to another lens that I would have to carry around. However, there is a pretty big con to using these extension tubes. So because you are creating that space between your camera and your lens, you're actually losing a stop of light in between. So that means that you do require a brighter room or to be outside to photograph things, okay? So you do have to be pretty close to a light source. So not only that, are you losing a stop of light um, between the space itself, you're also losing a stop of light because you have to shoot at a higher aperture. So I actually photograph my rings normally about 4.5, which typically I would shoot things at like 2.0, 2.2. Um, so I do have to increase the aperture when I shoot rings when using these extension tubes, which means you do have to increase your ISO quite a bit, okay? So depending on your camera, that could cause some grain or some quality issues with your images. Um, I use the Canon 5D Mark IV, so that's not really a problem for me personally. Um, plus, I don't mind a little bit of grain in my detail images anyway, but that definitely is a con. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how I would actually use these extension tubes to photograph rings. Okay, let's get started. So first, I'm gonna start with a 31 millimeter tube. You're gonna line up this arrow with the top part of your camera and you're just gonna screw it on just like you would a lens right there, okay? And then your lens is gonna go on top of the extension tube. Okay, now my settings for this ring setup is, um, my aperture is 4.5. I'm gonna shoot out um, an 80th of a second, which I would not ever go any lower than that because of the camera shake. And then my ISO, like I said, has to be pretty high up there. Um, this room is pretty dark, it's pretty cloudy today. So my ISO is actually at 4,000. For this 31 millimeter tube, you have to be pretty close to be able to focus on this ring, okay? And if you're not locking focus, you just kind of have to go in and out until it locks focus. I'm gonna toggle my focus point to the prong that's closest to the camera. Okay. All right, so now we are gonna move on to the 21 millimeter size. Okay. Same settings, same ring setup. 
This one, I don't have to be quite as close to the ring to get it to focus. I'm focusing on the top prong. That is the one that's closest to the camera right now. Okay, checking focus on this one. Looks good, okay. Another way I like to do my ring shots is using the live view on the Mark IV. I find that usually the focus is spot on. And especially if you have to be pretty low for the ring, it's a lot easier if you can just use the light focus, be able to focus and use the shutter to capture the ring. Okay, so for the 13 millimeter, you don't have to be nearly as close to the ring. Same thing, I am just gonna be my focus point, focus on that prong, kind of going back and forth until it locks focus on there. And take a couple, make sure they're in focus, check them. And those actually were not in focus. It's actually back focused onto the setting behind the big diamond. So ring shots are pretty finicky. I'm gonna switch to live view, see if I can get it to work that way. Sometimes I have better luck either with live view or with hand holding it and shooting through the viewfinder. Okay. Okay, and live view worked perfectly, so we got it. Okay, so I hope that was helpful for you. I'm actually gonna leave a link to the exact extension tube set that I own on Amazon. So if you wanna go and get those, I'm gonna leave a link um, also for Nikon and for Sony. Just make sure you check for the compatibility, of course, make sure it's gonna work with your specific camera. If you found this video helpful, make sure that you click the like button below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you click subscribe.